we go. Hey there, folks. This is Chris McLean, Peak Performance and Transformation Coach, back with another episode of the Peak Performance and Predictable Growth Show, the Peak Performance Show for creative agency founders, owners, and leaders, where we explore the agency journey from the unique perspective of those at the coalface of the industry. My guests help unlock and dissect strategies, tools, and tactics that are working right now to help you deliver better results for your clients and grow and scale your agency to six and seven figures and beyond. And in the studio today, I have Javian from Prosper Enterprise and Prosper help entrepreneurs sell more of their high ticket offers, programs, courses, and services online by partnering with Prosper's team of closers. Excited to get into all things sales and high ticket closing. Javian, thanks for joining me here today, mate. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, Chris. Excited. Let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the the, the art of sales. <clears throat> sort of very yeah. interested to, to get into that side of things. Um, just yeah. to, to start off, give us a quick recap of sort of where you've come from. I, I know you, you sort of recently sort of pivoted and moved into uh, sort of sales and, and closing side of things. But where, where did you come from? What's sort of the background of Prosper? Yeah, so originally Prosper Enterprise started out as uh, Prosper Marketing. So essentially, uh, it was a Facebook ad agency. Uh, mm -hmm. From the beginning, started with uh, working mostly with gym clients. And then from that point, transitioned into uh, e-commerce and online stores. I'm um, helping them scale their brands with their uh, Facebook ads. And over that process, through that journey, I just realized uh, more within myself of what I felt like my natural gifts and talents and, uh, you know, how I could best add value to a company was being served more through uh, the sales process and just um, kind of just building those genuine relationships with people and, um, you know, making that genuine connection, just honestly wanting to help someone is where I kind of really more got more so got purpose out of it. Uh, not so much the behemoth of digital marketing that what goes yeah. into a successful campaign is that's mm -hmm. the general yeah, yeah yeah so where where did that come from do you think where did that that sort of nous for sales and 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 you know human connection where if you look back sort of where did that is that just a naturally just a naturally great communicator you're just great at connecting with people where did that that's because sales is quite a it's quite a specific toolkit to have um yeah. where do you think that that came from yeah. So in my opinion, sales is the number one skill in life. You know, er everybody can use sales. It's a great skill to, you know, master, mm -hmm. equip with. Um, and it's just like you said, just building genuine human relationships with people. That's what it really boils down to. I know it kind of has this big, like sleazy type of, uh, you know, type of uh, <laughs> stigma to yeah, it, kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, really, it's just like you said, building those genuine connections. And I feel like, you know, that just comes from being a kid, just honestly wanting to fit in and figure out how mm -hmm. I can, you know, what inside of me can connect with this group of people and kind of let that show on the forefront. So it's just like, you know, seeing the what someone else has to bring to the table and kind of uh, implementing what I have and kind of coming together with similarities is how I really see it and where it mm -hmm. developed from. Yeah. So let's go into that that cuz yeah. like what you said there's a so there can be a perception of you know sleaziness or the used car salesman right in terms of sales yeah. but as you said it's a it's a really important life skill but if you're in business it's an even more critical skill if mm -hmm. you're not closing sales you've got a hobby not a business so exactly. it's really critical that you you build that skill set demystify that for us i know we talk about human connection but what does that actually look like how, how are you what are some of the sort of the i guess the techniques and the tactics how are you approaching um or framing that sales process to make it a human connection rather than a trying to sell somebody something that they don't actually need what's the for difference sure. there? yeah so i think it boils down to a couple of different things um one i don't really believe in so tactics or like the next biggest newest trick or whatever like that. I believe in principles and in stuff that's going to stand the test of time. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, really believing in your product or service that you're selling, whatever you're selling, uh, you know, it's, 
it's going to be obvious to the other person whether you believe it's going to do what you say it does or not. So you might as well, you know, nail that in first. So I think, you know, something, a product or service you can really trust and, you know, get behind. Also, just keep in mind on the sales call, it's not really a sales call. To me, I always frame it as like, I want to provide value to this person. If what I have, um, I feel in my best judgment is going to value their life, then it's in my duty and obligation to try to persuade that person to get it if that makes sense because sometimes yeah, a lot yeah. of the times actually it's just our egos and our own self getting in our own way mm. yeah yeah i like that framing of the sales conversation from and I've, i think we've, we've sort of mentioned this a couple of times on the show with different people but i like i like that what you just said about that that different framing right if you genuinely have a product or a service that is definitely that you know is going to contribute to somebody's life going to add value it's going to take them from wherever they are whatever pain whatever challenge they're going through right now to Mm -hmm. some ideal future and you know that you can help them do that Mm -hmm. it sort of becomes incumbent upon you to help them do that and a lot of the times that you know it's break working out where they are and maybe shifting some beliefs in them, shifting some behavioral traits, getting into why aren't they doing this already and sort of helping yeah. them through that yeah. process. So how do you, how do you approach that sort of part of breaking through some of the, um, the barriers that people put around when they're in a sales, if, if you're selling to me, yeah, I've got all these walls and these barriers. How do you sort of help somebody make the right decision for them? For sure. No, that's a great question. So, you know, obviously, you can't sell someone anything without getting to know them, uh, mm-hmm. getting to know about them first. So I feel like that's always a good place to start. Uh, I always like to keep in mind with any sales call, I just want to, I want to be listening eighty percent of the time, and I want to have the other person talking. Uh, I want to, yeah, I want to be listening eighty percent of the time and talking twenty percent of the time. Um, reason for that is just having, uh, I'm pretty sure we've all heard it, kind of like the doctor's framework to sales, and it really just uncovering the pain that someone might be going through at the moment and you know kind of highlighting that pain and what it's actually doing in their life um on a deeper level like how how is that actually impacting their health wealth or relationships you know something's dwindling by not fixing this issue and the sooner we fix it the sooner we can alleviate that pain and mm-hmm. you know get to the de- desired destination or the goal situation that they want to reach mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that sort of diagnostic approach, right? That that that, that doctor approach. If you walk in, so a patient walks into the doctor and says, "Oh, look, my my elbow sort of hurts," and you go, "Well, here's a here's a knee here's a put a knee brace on," because mm-hmm. because I sell knee braces, right? <laughs> that there's there's not a fit there, but that that yeah. can tend to be what happens. Mm-hmm. Right? People, rather than diagnosing, we sort of just instead of trying to understand, we're sort of pushing. Well, here's my thing, and this thing. I want you to buy my thing rather than trying yeah. to actually diagnose, meet the person where they're at and see if there's a good fit. Um, exactly. And that's where like the pre pre qualification comes in, like in the whole yeah. uh, pre framing process of warming somebody up to get to that sales call is just kind of um, qualifying them to that point to where on the call you can genuinely get value because whatever product or service you're selling to the person you're on the phone with, you should genuinely believe it's going to cause the change that they're already looking for. So it's mm-hmm. kind of just super seamless. And just that framework of thinking that in mind before your sales calls, I'm pretty sure will increase the uh, closing rate to anybody's business. Yeah. So do you, do you also help with that pre-qualification part or are you, when you work with clients, are they, are you picking them up after that kind of? They've yeah, been so, through training or they've been through some part of a funnel. They've got some pre-qualification before they get to you. Yeah. So I'll try to add, you know, as much consulting advice on the side as that is possible because their results are, you know, directly correlated with my results and how that uh, mm. turns out. So if I can improve their sales process and get the uh, prospect more qualified before I speak to them on the phone, you know, I'm going to definitely try to help the business owner as much as possible with that mm-hmm. process give them tips give them ideas uh see if it works for the business that's all you can really do with all, any marketing in general is just test like crazy a b test see what works what doesn't yeah right audience yeah mm. and what what do you see work i mean again this is a pretty pretty general uh kind of statement but what do you generally kind of see that works really well 
in that pre-qualification part? How is it you know, polls? Is it free giveaways? Is it diagnostics? Is it what sort of works? I mean, I guess everything works depending on where customers are at, but there is there something that kind of stands out to you? Uh, at the so, moment? Yeah. so it definitely depends on your niche and market and it comes down to knowing your niche and market. And then I try like to not overcomplicate anything because I feel like so much stuff is overcomplicated when it doesn't have to be. So uh, the simple truth is just add value in as much as you can. Um, you can never add too much value, more value you give. Um, I forgot what type of effect it's called, but uh, the more value you give to someone, naturally they're going to want to reciprocate that value in some way down the line. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like you're, you know, you're tapping into the human psychology a little bit by just providing as much as you can. I know a lot of people don't want to give away too much, or am I giving away too much for free? But you know, the more value you give up front, they're going to want to reciprocate that. So you know, VSLs work great. You know, just kind of showing them a case study of in their business, in their niche, um, for the type of businesses that I work with. But like I said, you just have to know your market. What will be valuable for them? And yeah, what will be valuable for them knowing that and just giving it to them. And, uh, you know, spreading it out on a sequence type basis before the call is very important. So I think they should at least have two to three touch points or value pieces before you even get on the call. Um, they should see your name or, you know, resonate it with, good positive emotions at least five or six times before the call as well um, whether that be advertisement testimonials case studies um just you know tips advice specific to their niche specific to their business let them know that you're thinking about them. just becoming more human uh I feel like in the social media where we're just getting a lot away from a lot of the human connection things that all humans appreciate mm -hmm. Yeah, so the the average is about seven touch points. Mm -hmm. I think that if you so sort of look over in, in terms of sort of marketing principles, that seems to be the one that comes up all the time. Is sort of seven touch points is that sort of ideal metric to get to before somebody's mm -hmm. basically they 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 know like and trust you around that sort of seven touch points. Like exactly. you said, if that's on a, you might meet them on a Facebook live, they might be in your group, they might get a, an email sequence, they might get a free training, a PDF. So as, as, as much as you can give up front. Um, I think that that other principle is the, the law of reciprocity. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so one well, basically give, give first, or as, um, as Gary Vaynerchuk <laughs> likes to say, jab, 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 right hook, right? So you yeah, got to jab, you got to jab a bit first before you just, if you just drop in bombs all the time and drop in right hooks, which is the sales message. Yeah. That's a, a good way to put people off rather than adding value, adding value, adding value and saying, Hey, by the way, I've actually got something to buy here. Yeah. If it's, if it's suitable and it's, for you. And it's underrated and it has to be meaningful value and thought after value because uh, now I think mm. a lot of people have been following the jab, 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 right hook mentality, but they're giving out these, you know, kind of robotic value type of propositions and expecting it to convert the same way as it did five, six, seven years ago when, you know, you have to get creative. You have to know your, you know, market on a deeper level than just the surface. What do they really want? Um Mm. And, you know, tapping into that, personalizing as much as you can, um, all that just comes, you know, can't even quantify how big of a result that could have for somebody's business. But just personalizing more and just trying to give, like, you know, actual value that somebody would actually want. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that that, yeah. that can be a catching point, right? Because, you know, we say this quite a lot that the kind of organic marketing uh, strategies that are very prevalent now it's very yeah. much about i am a leader i am i'm i'm authentic i am you know i'm an authority and that type you're pushing that type of content whether you are or not so that that yeah. style of hey i'm being authentic i'm here just to add value but there's a sales there's a call to action on every single post and go visit my yeah. website so that yeah, all, exactly. just as you're saying that yeah. there's a difference between kind of all authenticity and genuine yeah. Authenticity, or, to, or or the value prop or the lead prop is just a one page PDF that could have been a tweet, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all right, <laughs> you know, I just wasted ten minutes putting in my email, getting into your email list, not gonna unsubscribe, everything like that. You know, just, <laughs> I think hitting somebody with something out the gate that they just don't even expect, like so much value, to where it's just mm. like, oh wow, like, okay, how do I, you know, I have to get in touch with this guy. I gotta pay for something because the page just must be that much better.
Mm. Yeah. I would just yeah. encourage people just don't hold back with the, you know, what you can give, you know, give it all if you have it. Mm. Yeah, um, I, I really like that. I've heard that before. You know, give your best stuff up front. Mm-hmm. And if, I mean, well, well, yeah, I always <laughs> say the best stuff, you know, you got to say the best for last, but, you know, give, yeah. you know, give all of yourself as much as you can. Because, like I said, a lot of stuff is just going to come down to simplicity and, as you move up in those ladders of the value of the different type of packages, it's just mm. more personalization, more one-on-one type of, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you also say that there's that <clears throat> sort of talk about giving your best stuff up front? There's a, you can give, I can give you all of my tips. I can give you literally everything that I've ever trained anyone, mm-hmm. whether you do it or not, right? I can give you all my best stuff and you, you'll go, that is amazing. I'd love to do that but I'm too busy doing my other stuff Mm -hmm. and the training, the coaching, the programs, that's the stuff where the accountability and you actually get that stuff done. That's what you pay for. You pay for that, that proximity to the person, right? So you get closer to the person, whether it's group training, one-on-one training, done for you services, that's what you pay for and you pay for that access, but you also pay for that. Let's actually get this stuff done now. So that that's yeah. kind of how I see it a little bit. That you can you can give away all of your IP and your knowledge and your concepts and your principles up front, yeah. which really gives people that insight to who you are, how you operate, what they can expect. But then the working with you, the paid thing is okay. Let's actually get this stuff done now. Mm-hmm. Is that is does does that make sense? Is that, is that does that I, kind of how you see things playing out as well, or you see it differently? No, yeah, hundred percent. I feel like you're spot on. Um, you know, I feel like just that as well as when you pay you're paying to have skin in the game and i think that's Mm, super underrated mm. you know you need skin in the game to you know kind of put that pressure on yourself you know um because i feel like you know after analyzing talking with a lot of people reading a lot of stuff i feel like a lot of people's main problems just even with my own life is just you're just getting in your own way 90 percent of the time you know what you have to do when you have to do it like you you have the information sometimes, and sometimes you just need that, like you said, extra accountability from the group, from the program. It should break you through to that next level in some way. But that skin in the game of just paying the amount that you're uncomfortable paying at that amount of time or something you've never paid for or just stepping out of your comfort zone, that's just going to push you to making it work for you. You know, you have to become yeah. resourceful at a point um, with your resources. Mm-hmm. and kind of make it work for them. Like, I don't understand somebody that, you know, takes the time to leave a bad comment on a course or, like, uh, you know, talk stuff about a certain person. Like, whoever's giving value, they got all my utmost respect. If you're giving value, keep doing your thing. You're trying to help somebody's life. And, you know, we as individuals have the choice of choosing what we like from each person and applying that to our life um, mm-hmm. to get to where we want to get to yeah 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 i really like that but that that's a, a pretty um that's a an advanced way of thinking and so that i think a lot of people expect everything from something right they expect to well i've, I've paid for the program now i'll, I'll yeah. I'm, I'm sitting back and i'm waiting for the program to do its thing right yeah. I've, I've paid my money where's my results without yeah. actually they said committing understanding that it's skin in the game and understanding that they've actually got to do the work to make it work. Exactly. Right? It's like, yeah, you just get to the point where it's just like, okay, it's like this or nothing. Like I got to make it work. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, pay for something and don't give it an option to fail. Mm. Yeah, I love that skin in the game, like burning your bridges is another exactly. sort of way to think exactly. about it, right? You sort of cross the river, burn the bridge, and well, I can't go back now. I've, I've got to go forward. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's uh, – particularly with things like high ticket programs and that sort of thing is that that uncomfortableness that discomfort of look this is expensive this might might be the the biggest investment i've ever made in myself or in my business but if yeah. i make it it's going to give me that accountability frame it's going to give me that container of when i show up to this thing i'm 100 percent in and i'm going to it just yeah. shifts the shifts the consciousness right it's like yeah. i'm in this yeah and having that perspective going in as a salesperson on a sales call or trying to provide value to your target prospects is going to just increase the closing rate because you're not trying to sell them some 
dream. You're just trying to, like you mm -hmm. said earlier in the podcast, you want to break the limiting beliefs. You want to find them where they're at. 99 times out of 10, it's just them getting in their own way. So highlight what parts of the program will you know, help them get out of their own way in a sense. Because, you know, mm -hmm. humans, we want to feel like we're doing it on our own anyway. Uh, a lot of times we don't, yeah. you know, want to get a handout, something like that. We want to feel empowered. So if the more you can empower someone, <laughs> stuff will be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. autonomy is a massive, massive thing for, just for success, mm -hmm. for just enjoyment and feeling like we're, um, like we're, we're performing at our best that we're, we get more engagement, we get more enjoyment, we get more fun when we're committed, but also just when we have that autonomy, that sense mm -hmm. of I, I, I'm doing this, I'm in control, that's a massive, massive. Um, let's yeah. sort of talk about flow states. Autonomy is a massive flow trigger. That's one of those things that's really, really important. Okay, um, but, it, but, it, but it has that, that massive benefit of when I'm in control and kind of I, I'm steering this ship, exactly like you said, it gives you that felt sense of, I'm doing this. I'm in control. I'm taking the information, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm doing it my way. That's that's a yeah, a massive piece of pe people that get success out of programs have that frame, have that that mindset of yeah, mm -hmm. I'm 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 being taught, I'm being mentored, I'm being shown the path, but mm -hmm. I'm still the one that's walking the path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I feel like what we're talking about on this podcast needs to get talked about so much more because you know I feel like a lot of people. They hear, oh, it's 80% mindset, like master the mindset, master the mindset. You know, people don't really get into like what that really means. And mm -hmm. a lot of the times it just comes down to, yes, having better strategies, but a lot of it is just mental toughness and the resilience and grit. We're just getting, especially in America, I don't know how it is in Australia, we're getting more soft as a society that's just like, you know, yeah. accepting everything and not taking responsibility for anything and it's just creating a bunch of crybabies yeah well that's unfortunately that's the uh that's the way the, the the global agenda i guess is moving at the moment we've been kind of pushed yeah. into that that weakened state and yeah it, it's the same here as everywhere and particularly that the last year has been a, a big enforcer of that yeah um you see yeah exactly so, what you said so are you optimistic or pessimistic about that going forward what do you think Oh, look, I'm, I'm I'm always optimistic. I'm rigorously optimistic at heart. I can't I can't okay. not be optimistic. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, I honestly, I like I honestly believe that optimism is a a superpower. But yeah. I mean, the, the, it always forms dichotomy, right? The more things shift towards weakness or whatever you want to call, they shift one way on a bigger scale. There's more that stands up on the other side, right? There's a duality mm -hmm. that always yeah. exists. So yeah. the more we get shifted one way, the more there's opportunity to stand up on the other side of things. So I, I think like there's that. there's always that opportunity, like you say, to, to, if yeah. you understand where things are going, say, yeah. look, I, I don't really like that. How, how can What can I do to make things better for myself, for my people, for my tribe, for my yeah. community? It reminds yes. me of the quote. I don't know uh, who said it. Was it Teddy Roosevelt maybe? I don't know. Uh, hard times, hard times mm. uh, create... Uh, strong men, strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. Hard times. Yeah, yeah, the cycle of peace. So it's just like cyclical nature to it all. Uh, how yeah. I kind of look at it, you know, and having that perspective, ability to just, you know, widen your perspective and see where you fit into it all um, will help you battle your own weaknesses, your own ego. Um, mm to like kind of pinpoint what you need to work on. It's just like, okay, I did grow up in America, pretty middle class, eh, I'm probably pretty soft. What can I do to, you know, get this mental toughness thing up or discipline it? Yeah. Yeah, That's all yeah 100%. Process. I mean, we're on the peak performance show, so we're trying to, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, that, that that's the game, right? That, that the whole game right there is that it starts with self-awareness. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. We talk about mindset and all this other stuff. It really comes down to, self-awareness and that awareness of who am i how do how do i relate to the world around me what is the world around me where are things going what does that mean to me what it, you know and and having making that intentional conscious choice mm -hmm. based on facts based on whatever resonates for you and but mm -hmm. but being intentional whatever whatever way that takes you 
if we're autonomous, we're intentional, we're acting from our own sense of vision, purpose, passion, values, mission, if we're acting from that and making choices from that perspective, mm-hmm. we're going to be pretty, as I said, that, that puts us in a, a position of empowerment, a position of strength, but it really just comes down to that essentially self-awareness. How, how, yeah. how, do I, how am I relating to what's going on out there? And instead mm-hmm. of being driven by what's out there, let's be driven by your internal state, right? that intrinsic yeah. motivation, that uh, sort of growth mindset. How, how can I impact the world rather than being impacted by the world? Yeah. And just by having that outlook and perspective and knowing that that's the path you're walking on, that's what's going to give people the sense of fulfillment. You know, like you said, mm-hmm. um, you know, for the intro of the show, it's kind of like discussing the many facets and the journey of a uh, agency owner. You know, everything's about the journey. Everybody talks about the journey, but yeah. how many people really enjoy the journey and can really, you know, say they really do? Um, I feel like, you know, especially in this Instagram world, a lot of people just want to fake positivity as well. I, don't, I hate mm-hmm. to be a pessimist about it, but it's just the truth. So, um, you know, I think that's where the real enjoyment will, and fulfillment will come for a lot of people. It's just knowing that you're on that path, you're, you know, doing what you want to do based on, like you said, your own values and not letting uh, the main stopper. And I think a lot of people's life is just like the ego and fear, um, really, you know, uh, without fear, a lot of people do a lot of different things uh, and yeah. have a lot more happier people. And it just doesn't exist. Like, it's just mm. not a real thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. perception. I mean, fear, fear is great in that it it's a, it's a trigger survival. to go. Yeah. yeah, it's a survival mechanism, but it, it's a trigger to go, what does this mean? But most people don't do that, right? They just yeah. they, they drop into fear because we're... I mean, again, especially where we're at right now, there's so much propaganda, there's so much fear and negativity just being yeah. pumped and streamed into yeah. our brains, into the, you know, the the hypothalamus is just like in fear state, fear state, fear state, fear yeah. state. And unless you have that consciousness and unless you have that that moment to step out of that and say, what does this actually mean, which the majority of people just don't give themselves that time, that space to yeah. step out of that, whether that's just sitting and taking some deep breaths or yeah. learning something or reading or escaping that, that fear state. Um, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's intentional. It's a conscious decision. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I made a tweet about this a couple of weeks back. Everybody follow me on Twitter at JV and Hodges <laughs> pretty much everywhere. Uh, but I feel like people nowadays just look at life in too much of a black and white sense um, when it's a lot more gray, you know, yeah. everything's not so, one size fits all, you know, um, and it's actually much more gray than I realized. Like I learned more and more how gray it is once you mm. really go, uh, you know, through life, you know, you just realize that everybody's truly unique and everybody's truly different. You truly have to find out what works for you. Um, it might not be so cookie cutter um, mm. with just so many different things. So um, I feel like that's a good perspective shift because it just goes back to like what you said like some people look at fear and just say oh that's bad let's just stay away from that i'm glad you brought that up actually because that's kind of how i was framing it but um Mm -hmm. you know it can be used to aid you in um pulling you out of situations to propel you to the next situation on where you need to be or it could be a affirmation that you're doing the right thing or a good omen that you're going Mm -hmm. down the right path that you know, there's discomfort, you know, discomfort, yeah. that's the growing pains, as they call them. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, things are just not so black and white. It's just a lot more gray, a lot more nuanced. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that it's it's that, that delicate balance between that individuality, but as you said, right up the front, taking that individuality and putting it through principles, right, that are mm-hmm. foundational principles there's laws there's truths there's things that just are always yeah so sir. it's understanding those truths it's having first principles thinking and i'm obsessed and with those figuring those yeah. out like i'm just yeah. obsessed with because that's just foundation it's just like you know it can guide so much and prevent so many missteps from people you know i think people uh i'm not gonna go there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no point in reinventing the wheel there's certain things that are 
truth. There's certain things that are foundational and principle based. If you understand those and then tap that into and, and put that through your own personal filter. And if you can get that right, that's that's where you get some some really genuine autonomy and empowerment. You can start to step into something bigger and better for yourself. So yeah, really, 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 really enjoyed this conversation. Kind of went off onto a whole other tangent, but it was, it was really good. Really, uh, oh, yeah. love uh, dissecting this stuff and getting into some some more uh, heady stuff like that. Um, if sure, to I close out, if, if, yeah, <laughs> exactly, we could probably carry on for another forty five minutes. Um, <laughs> if people do want to connect with you, find out more about you, um, there's a couple of places up on screen. But where's the best place for them to come and continue this conversation, have a new conversation? Um, if they're looking for someone to come in and close their high ticket programs, where's the yes. best place for them to come and get in touch with you? Yeah, so I'm pretty much JV and Hodges everywhere, as you see it right there on you know social media. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel where I talk more about these type of topics, uh, a little more more unfiltered, I would say. So mm -hmm. uh, check me out there, Twitter as well. Um, but pretty much everywhere, JV and Hodges, just reach out. Let's talk. I just love connecting, love connecting with people, getting new perspectives and, you know, facilitating conversations. And, you know, I think this is all great. And yeah, man, I really appreciate you having me on. I had a good time. Great convo. Uh, me too. More in the future. <laughs> yeah, absolute pleasure, man. Really good to connect. Really, really good conversation. Really enjoyed this one. Very insightful. Hopefully the uh, people listening can take some, some value out of it, yeah. put it through their own filter, take what's useful, disregard the rest. But, um, yeah, some really, really, really interesting stuff in there. I appreciate you swinging by. Hope you have a, an amazing rest of your evening. And uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in wherever you're tuning in from. If you've enjoyed the episode, hey, drop a like, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for dropping by. JV, and thanks for being here, mate. Really, really good stuff. And sure. we'll catch you all on the next episode. Thanks for being here. Peace.